Good morning, everybody. This, I'm Pastor Herb, and today is Easter Sunday. I have a question for all of the children today. What does Easter mean to you? Yes, that, that is part of Easter, but I have another story that I'd like to tell, but I'll need your help. Mrs. Ducky, is it okay if your kids come down to help me with the story? Oh, yes, Mommy, Mommy, can we please help Pastor Herb, please? Yeah, Mom, please help. Woohoo! Yes, Mommy, Mommy, thank Mom. you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, kids, do you know your lines? Oh, oh, it's so high up here. Hi, Pastor Herb. Yeah, we know our lines. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, go ahead. Well, today we're going to tell a story about three people, and I will play the part of Mary Magdalene. I will play the part of Simon Peter, a disciple of Jesus. And I will be playing the part of John, the youngest disciple of Jesus. Our story begins on the very first day of the week, right after Jesus had been crucified and buried. As John said, it was the first day of the week. I was so sad because we had all seen and watched as Jesus was crucified on the cross. We saw him die and knew he had been buried. Yeah, buried in a, a tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Council of the Jews. Joseph had re secretly become a follower of Jesus and was assisted by Nicodemus, another council member and silent follower of Jesus. According to Jewish traditions and laws, Jesus' body had been wrapped in strips of linen covered with a mixture of spices like aloe and myrrh and placed in the tomb. Well, then a huge stone was rolled in front of the tomb to seal it. So let's use our imagination, let's use our imagination and go back to, uh, yeah, that morning on the first day of the week. I was so taken in my grief that I just wanted to go one more time to the tomb. I knew that inside was only his body, but I just wanted to be near him again. So I left very early in the morning and it was still dark outside. And I made my way to the tomb where Jesus had been buried. And I drew nearer to the tomb. I could sense something was different. Not necessarily wrong, but different. Hmm. Then as I got close enough to see, I, I nearly fainted. The stone was rolled away from the tomb, and it, it was empty. And I ran to find Peter and the others. Yeah, Mary came in and, uh, and was out of breath. And John and I were there together. And we listened in shock as she told us what she had found. Oh, Peter, Peter, it's terrible. Mary, Mary, what is wrong? What is it? What is wrong? Well, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Who took him? I don't know, but the stone has been rolled away, and the tomb is empty. What? Empty? Are you sure? Yes, I saw it for myself. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll find out what's happened. I'm going with you. So we left and began running through the city to the tomb. John, being a little younger, actually beat me there. Uh, yeah, I did. I got to the tomb first. But when I got to the opening, I became a little hesitant. I slowly looked into the tomb, almost afraid to enter. By now the sun had risen. And I could see the linens were there, but the body 
was gone. And the small little linen handkerchief that was laid over Jesus' face was lying next to them, all neatly folded up. I wanted to go in, but... Oh, I didn't hesitate. I ran straight into the tomb once I arrived, and I just uh, said to John, the linens were there, but Jesus' body was not there. I was staring at the linen handkerchief, folded neatly with care. I remember thinking, why would they unwrap the body just to steal it? Why not just take it? But then I got this feeling that something wonderful had happened. I believed, didn't understand, but I believed that Jesus' body was not stolen. Oh, I was trying to take it all in. It was puzzling. I had to think and understand what to do next. So John and I left and went back to our homes. I didn't understand a thing. All I knew was that my Lord's grave had been to me desecrated. His body was gone. I began to cry. I, I didn't know what else to do. As I was crying, I looked into the tomb. I saw two angels clothed in white sitting there where Jesus' body had lay. And one was where the head and the other where the feet had been. And they they spoke to me. They said, Woman, why are you weeping? And I answered them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I don't know where they've laid him. Immediately, oh, I sensed a presence near me. And I turned. And a man was there. I, I was still crying. I, I didn't recognize who it was. You thought it was the gardener at first. Well, yeah. Yes, I did. I didn't know who it was. I just heard him say, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? All that was on my mind was to get back to the body of Jesus. So I answered him, Sir. If you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will go get him. Surprise! Ha! <laughs> Surprise indeed! Because the man I thought was the gardener said, Mary! And I knew the voice and the face. And I cried out, Teacher! And I tried to hug him, but he stopped me. Do not cling to me, for I have not ascended to my father. But go to the brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father, and your father, and to my God, and your God. And Mary did come and tell us. It was kind of hard to believe. I mean, she said she had seen Jesus, and he was ascending to the father. Besides, why hadn't Jesus showed himself to us? Anyways, by that evening, we had found all the other disciples. Except Thomas. Oh yeah, except Thomas. But other than that, we were all assembled in one place. And the doors were closed. We were afraid the temple authorities, or even the Romans, might be coming for us. They had crucified Jesus, and we were worried that we were going to be next. And the tomb was empty. We were afraid they would blame us. Anyways, that evening, we were all assembled and the doors were closed. And then Jesus appeared and he said, Peace be unto you. The sudden appearance, needless to say, shocked us. I am so thankful that Jesus said what he did, because I, for one, was ready to run. Oh, but he showed us his hands, and even the place on his side, where he had been pierced by the spear, and the wounds, they were healed. It, it was him. It was Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. He was 
alive. Not a ghost, nor a heavenly apparition. His hands were warm to the touch, and in his lies was life. Eventually we got Thomas back, and he believed as well. It all began to make sense. Jesus talking about the Son of Man being raised up, and his temple being raised up in three days. It was all part of God's plan. Jesus sacrificed himself to atone us for our sins. For us, because we could not do it ourselves. And Jesus was raised up on the third day as proof that he was the Son of God. He has ascended into the heavens and sits at the right hand of the Father. One day, Jesus will return for us, mm -hmm. for those who believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, those people who confess their sins and ask forgiveness from God, those who believe and confess that Jesus the Son of God died for our sins and that for God it has raised him from the dead. For, for God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For, For God, God did not send his Son, son into, into the world to condemn the world, but, but that through, through, him the world through him might be saved. That means me and you and all of us. Woohoo! Thank you very much, kids. That was great. Thank you, Pastor Herb. That was a good story. Can we have chocolate now? Um, maybe a little bit later. Woohoo! <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Okay,